Hello, my name is John Lewis, and you've just crossed over into crowdfunding hell. It makes animated GIFs, it takes still images, and it shoots video, but it does so much more. That was the beginning. It was our first look at the first product to be produced by The Next Thing Company. It was supposed to be a camera that was powered by the then fairly new Raspberry Pi, and it was going to revolutionize the way that you took pictures. Among other things, it was supposed to be a hackable camera, which would allow the end user to reconfigure it on their own into a variety of different things that they would find creatively most useful. When they went on Kickstarter, this exciting idea that they were promoting got over $71,000 in backing money. And why not? All of the things that you would expect to find of a legitimate company, they could be found on databases for things like incorporation and even on a California database for registered businesses there. This helped when they started making promises concerning all of these wondrous features that would be included with the auto camera. Truly, this was an exciting product that was going to be promoted by exciting people. Particularly when you saw the sheer number of outlets that were writing up and covering a product that hadn't even been produced yet. They must have something going for them, right? The three main principles of the company even made sure that we knew their names and what they looked like even though they had no product yet to go to market with. When they did go to market though, things got a little dicey. Those that got their auto began complaining about a lack of quality, a lack of the ability to operate it, and that some of the things that they were asking for and were supposed to receive hadn't materialized. Some had even pointed out that it appeared that once Auto had shipped to those people who were lucky enough to have actually received it, all support and all updates appear to have stopped completely, abandoned in favor of the next big thing that the company was putting out, a little thing called Chip. This was Chip. It was apparently supposed to be a competitor for the Raspberry Pi that they had used in auto previously, and they were going to make it themselves, and as you saw, were going to be putting it into a variety, hopefully, of products, starting with the pocket chip, a small game-type computer that you could carry around with you. It's a small wonder that they grabbed so much attention, though, because the price could not be beaten. Nine dollars. They eventually got up to $2,071,927 from 39,560 backers, once again using Kickstarter to raise the money. Once again, though, as evidenced by these comments on a YouTube site that did a hands-on demonstration of the chip, we have to figure that they over-promised and yet again under-delivered. Really, these people were not too happy, and they were willing to share their comments to let it be known. The comments didn't get much better if you went to the comments section of the original Kickstarter site where hundreds if not thousands of angry people began venting that they had not gotten their chip or wondering where it was and wondered what the heck was going on with the next thing company. Once again the backers found that all they could do was wave goodbye to their money in frustration as the company moved on to what they considered the next thing.
I've done it. We've all done it. And that's why we made DashBot. DashBot, you were promised an Alexa, or at least an Alexa-like experience, in your car. DashBot, which was eventually renamed Voter due to some sort of copyright issue on the name, really took off with the imaginations of most of the public. Clocking in at over $266,000 from over 3,000 backers, this one had the same elements as all of the others. A really inexpensive price for what you were getting. Add to that an extremely aggressive timeline for production, and it was no wonder that this caught an awful lot of people's imaginations as they read through the copy written for this campaign. At this point, with all of the claims that the company was making for all of the tech involved in this product, plus their history of making claims and then not really delivering on them from the previous campaigns we've cited, perhaps they needed to be a bit skeptical and start asking questions. So why didn't people pick up on what was happening with the Next Thing company? Probably it was because they couldn't, really. We've already shown you that if you tried to research the company, all the paperwork seemed to be there. And if you really wanted to find out about the people that were involved with it, well, even now, up through at least the 24th of March of 2018, they all have LinkedIn profiles in which they proudly show that they're still involved. As you can see here from a simple search of the LinkedIn site. While it may not have been a scam, it looks like what we had here were a group of people who had dreams, stars in their eyes, and really thought that they could pull off something that many people with far more backing and money never could. The problem is the backers don't know that. How could you have protected yourself against this type of thing? Never having gotten involved in crowdfunding at all. Wait until it becomes a retail product, and then there are reviews on it, and you'll know exactly how well it functions. As for the Next Thing Company and those who were a part of it, we're waiting for you now. Your place is assured in crowdfunding hell. <laughs>